Oh, over here at Talbot Industries, working on old number 69. And uh, we're getting ready to do another engine swap this time, the two cylinder. We're going to start figuring out how it's going to go. So, yeah, this is going to be another example of putting 20 pounds of shit in a five pound bag. So, as Kyle said a moment ago, and I quote, we haven't bit off more than we can chew yet, but our mouths are full. Yeah. It's a big bite. Huge, dude. So the first thing we gotta do is zippy zap, zippy zap, get this out of here, and we're basically gonna figure out where the motor's gotta be, and then build the cart around it. Instead of this way, which we kinda just built the plate, put the motor in it, made it work. This one we gotta work around it a bit more. Okay, so we got the motor pretty much set in place where we think it's gonna go roughly. Um, I was hoping to drive it off the accessory side as opposed to the flywheel side, but for various reasons, this is what's gonna make the most sense. Um, namely, the oil pan on the accessory side kicks out there and because of that, we can't fit the clutch because the relationship between the crank and the oil pan is tighter than the radius here. So basically what we're gonna do is, this is the original serpentine pulley, and I'm gonna have a piece made that is basically this with um, the ability to accept a one inch keyed shaft because that's what this clutch takes. So that'll go on there and we will retain the motor mounts in the front. Um, this whole thing's gonna be on motor mounts which will be way nicer than last time. And the way a factory golf cart drivetrain is set up is the engine and the rear end are kind of on like a cradle together. One of the reasons we had such bad axle wrap on this is because we were totally changing how the axle is supposed to be suspended. So typically the axle would bolt to the engine, would bolt to the frame via a motor mount, which would mean that these two would move in tandem. And in doing so, it would basically prevent any chance of axle wrap. So when we made the axle independent of the engine the first go around, that's where the axle wrap came from. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the motor mounts on the front and then on the back, you can see it's got a flange there for the mounts. And we will build a mount coming off of there and figure out how to tie that into the rear end, which means that we'll have factory style mounting in the back. Now, to mount the rear axle to the leaf springs, instead of this shitty system here, because, oh, we're gonna need more lift, too. A little bit more lift. So, Kyle's gonna draw up some perches in SolidWorks because we have the technology, and that way we'll be able to put, like, proper lift blocks and U-bolts and stuff like that. Also, we'll be robbing the four-pack leaf springs out of the parts cart, so that'll get us a little bit of lift. Um, for the exhaust, the plan is to use this factory manifold pipe, something like that, which will kick the exhaust down and we'll run it along the frame somehow with a muffler and all that so it's nice and quiet. I have an alternator that we'll put there. We'll have a radiator over there somewhere. So we'll have coolant piping going to that. And we'll be able to retain the factory fuel filter um, that this came with as well as, uh, I don't know if we'll use this pump, or we'll use the pump that it came with, but either way. So, first we gotta get the clutch and the belt on there, and we can make sure that the distance between the engine and the training is good. Once we confirm that, then we can start putting the motor in here. So, it sounds like a lot of work, and it'll be a lot of work, but in all reality, it's, it's actually pretty simple compared to dealing with all the jack shaft bullshit from the last motor, so. Yee! So in the previous clips you saw 
on the flywheel there was a like a five rib serpentine belt style pulley and that would have originally driven the air compressor over here and the alternator over there on the APU so brought the pulley to my boy Tony and what he did is he shaved off the five rib and bored out the center and made this piece here which accepts a one inch key shaft and you can see it's got the two little bolts sticking out so on the back side of that there's two allen head bolts that hold this whole thing together so you just go ahead and put the shaft in there go ahead and slide the clutch on and boom we're in business you can see we made I had to make the shaft long just in case because we don't know what other accessories we might drive off here like might put the alternator back here or whatnot but that's how that's gonna work all right fam here's where we're at with the old diesel cat so as you can see we've got the this was the other half of the motor mount obviously this was out of the reefer unit we cut and this is basically gonna mate up against this part of the frame which coincidentally is broken great so that's gonna go there and I had ordered a longer belt so I'm gonna school you guys on belts real quick so this is an inch and an eighth wide 42 inch outside diameter the belt that I ordered that I ordered based on some calculations that I did was uh, an inch and an eighth by like 48 roughly and it's actually too too big and the motor is going to fit really well if we're able to get the mount up against this part of the frame because that'll give us good clearance for like the starter for the exhaust it'll give us pretty good height and that sort of thing so there's a lot of reasons why we want to use that part of the frame but if we do that then the long belt's too long so i threw the the original belt on just for shits and giggles and if we didn't have to run a shifter mechanism so as I was saying before my phone had the audacity to cut me off due to lack of storage, if we didn't have to run the shifter cables, we'd basically be able to put the motor right on top of the training, more or less, and then you could run the stock belt, but we can't do that. So I ordered a belt from Advance. It's going to be here tomorrow because right now even Amazon Prime isn't next day shipping. It's going to have a belt tomorrow. It's going to be like 45 inches long, so it should be in the middle of the other two. Cut the shaft down to fit. Forgetting that. I also got a bunch of these perches. Fucking nerd. So these are for a trailer, but they fit here pretty good. So I have a bunch of them, and I think we might look at converting the leaf springs to a traditional like perch and U-bolts and stuff. But if nothing else, if we can put them this way and use them as a means to attach the engine to the axle since I don't really want to hang a 300 pound engine on these little like 5 16 studs. So here's the engine mount we came up with and now you'll see what it looks like installed. And just like that the engine's mounted. So originally I had said that we were gonna like do a vertical facing shackle like that and you can see that we didn't and the reason for that is this just wound up working better so this is two inch or maybe that's inch and a half i don't know it's square tube and then there's our motor mount that you saw previously and then we got a piece of c channel under here that's stitched on the side and it's plug welded on the bottom um this perch still needs to be welded to the axle and then we're going to get rid of that crap and use perches as well but the motor is in, the front mount needs to be uh, welded out still. There's some, some TIG appreciation for welds that'll never be seen. So that's the front mount. And yeah, the thing's sitting there in its own weight. Hangs down a lot, but that's okay. So that's going to wind up this clip. 
and hopefully next time we do more work to it.